Well, thanks very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Yes, my, my talk, as mentioned, uh, relates to a book I've, I've just written, well, I say just written, came out uh, middle of last year, Machine Learning in Business, <clears throat> an Introduction to the World of Data Science. And just to give you a bit of background here, um, one of the innovations at Rotman, which uh, FinHub, which I'm academic director of, has been responsible for, is teaching machine learning across all of our programs. So, <clears throat> and this year is the first time it's happened. So we've got the Master of Finance program and the Master of Financial Risk Management program have machine learning as a compulsory course. And MBA, which has machine learning as an elective course, that's what I'm teaching right now, and um, the undergraduate uh, program, the BCom program, has also got machine learning as, uh, as an elective course, although I think over time it's gonna become a compulsory course. So, uh, and what's our philosophy with these courses? I mean, our philosophy is that students need to learn enough about machine learning uh, to be able to communicate productively with data scientists. So they have to know a bit about the algorithms, they've had to have a bit of experience with the algorithms, know what their strengths and weaknesses are, and so on. They've gotta be able to talk the language of data scientists. And <clears throat> so why did I write this book? Well, <clears throat> of course, when I uh, got the job of teaching machine learning uh, to two or three different groups, I looked around for a textbook. And of course, there's a lot of books out there. Um, there's books that are written by computer scientists for computer scientists, and I've learned a lot from those books myself, but somehow they weren't really appropriate to business students. You know, the sort of things that worry computer scientists are not really uh, what our business students are interested in. So that's at one extreme, the sort of books written by computer scientists for computer scientists. At the other extreme, we've got... Um, you know, books which are just talking very generally about AI and machine learning, how it's gonna change the world and so on, but don't really get into details. So my book is kind of somewhere halfway between the two. Um, it, uh, it does talk about the algorithms. It gives examples taken from business of how the algorithms are used and there's exercises that uh, people who are using the book um, can, can work with. Now, the material in the Rotman magazine is taken primarily from the last chapter of the book, which is the least, the least technical chapter, I should say. It's the, it's the chapter which talks about issues for society. So that's what I'll talk about now. Um, what are the issues for society that, um, that uh, AI and machine learning give rise to? So, <clears throat> data privacy. Is, is one important issue. I mean, machine learning thrives on data, that's why it's called big data. Um, it's been estimated that in any two-year period, we generate nine times as much data as existed at the beginning of the two-year period. So the amount of data in the world is growing exponentially, um, <clears throat> very fast, actually. And this, of course, it, is great for machine learning because machine learning thrives on data, but um, it creates the problem of who owns the data and all sorts of data privacy issues. I think the European, and you know, I talk about those in the book, um, I think the European Union has been at the forefront as far as data privacy issues are concerned. There's um, regulations called the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR in the European Union, which I think was 2018. And the key thing in that regulation is that if you give your data to an organization for a particular purpose, that organization cannot pass the data on to somewhere else uh, without your permission. In other words, okay, I give you my data, but it still belongs to me and you can't do anything with it unless I say you can. And there's, an, there's a lot of other very sensible uh, rules as well within uh, GDPR. So that's one of the issues that I talk about uh, in the uh, extract that's in the Rotman magazine. Um, transparency and interpretability. I, I, you know, one of the problems 
with machine learning is that it tends to be a black box. Um, one very successful application of machine learning has been to credit decisions. So, you know, whether in fact uh, somebody is granted a loan when they apply for it or not. <clears throat> but just think about it, if you, if you go along to a bank and apply for a loan, and for some reason you get turned down, and you say to the representative, well, why did I get turned down? And the representative says, well, the algorithm. <laughs> the algorithm says you should get turned down. I can't tell you more than that. That's not a very satisfactory answer. So we need what's become very important in machine learning is translating the uh, <coughs> recommendations made by machine learning algorithms to things that human beings, so, so that human beings can actually understand why a particular decision is made. Okay, and uh, a lot of progress has been made on that, um, but it's clearly a, a, you know, a very important issue for society. These, some algorithms are more black box-ish than other algorithms. Biases are important issue in, in machine learning algorithms. As I say, machine learning algorithms thrive on data. The data, by and large, is historical data. So inevitably, if you, if you train a machine learning algorithm with historical data, that machine learning algorithm is going to be biased towards whatever um, decisions you've made in the past or whatever um, <clears throat> strategies you've used for whatever is being considered in the past. Um, a classic example here, which everybody talks about, it was when Amazon decided they were going to use machine learning to make personnel decisions. And, you know, one would think that Amazon got, would have got pretty good at doing machine learning, so they, you know, collected a lot of data, fed it into their algorithm and so on. And the algorithm was biased in favor of males against females, which was very embarrassing for Amazon. Uh, the reason was that Amazon had hired predominantly males. And so naturally, when you look, use the historical data, males look better than females. Um, so, of course, Amazon had to abandon that particular application of machine learning. But that's just one example. I mean, if we go back to my example of credit decisions, um, inevitably, you're going to be biased. There's going to be biases there because you don't have data on the loans you didn't make. In other words, you don't know in the past if you had made a particular loan whether it would have worked out well because you just didn't make the loan. So your data is going to be biased towards whatever strategies you've used in the past for making loans. Uh, adversarial machine learning is a, a big issue, I think. Um, machines are a lot easier to fool than human beings. And <clears throat> so... A simple example here would be driverless cars. If, uh, if you want to fool a driverless car, what you do, you might come up with a sign that you post at the side of the road with particular colors and so on. And car comes along, reads the sign, and does something that you don't really want it to do. A human being would not be fooled by the sign. A human being would say, oh, that's you know, not a correct sign. I'll ignore it. But uh, that's not necessarily what the driverless car is going to do. And of course, it can lead to all sorts of bad outcomes. Finally, let me, you know, just one, one thing everybody talks about, you read articles in the newspaper all the time about this, the impact of AI on jobs. Are we all going to uh, have a lot less jobs to go around? Well. <clears throat> What we're in now is the fourth industrial revolution. First one was steam engine and water power, uh, then electricity and mass production, computers and digital technology, and, and now it's uh, AI and automation. Each of these industrial revolutions, people said, oh, we're, you know, it's gonna be a lot of job losses. Um, it's gonna be terrible. Society will never be the same. Certainly, there was disruption. All of them 
Uh, all of these uh, industrial revolutions created disruption. Some sorts, you know, some jobs were lost, but others were created. And in total, the number of jobs didn't go down. And that's what I expect to happen with AI and automation. I think as <laughs> the human race is really good at coming up with new jobs. I mean, there's going to be new jobs involved in managing big data sets, for example. If we all have much more leisure as a result of AI and automation, then, you know, then jobs are going to be created to make sure we use that leisure time productively. So um, I, there's going to be a lot of disruption, no question about it. Um, some jobs are going to disappear, but others are going to um, replace them. So thank you for listening to me, and uh, hope you'll buy my book. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.